Today, Hasselblad is launching a brand new lens. It's the 28 millimeter F4 lens, and that's on a medium format sensor. So if this were on a full frame camera, it would be equivalent to about a 22 millimeter F2.8 lens. I think this wide angle of view is perfect for 2023. In today's terms, we get closer to our subjects. We get a little more intimate. And the fact that it's on a 100 megapixel X2D 100C means I could crop all the way down to 50 millimeters and still have enough pixels to print like a 16 by 20 inch print. This is the best camera setup for people who don't accept compromises. Yeah, it's a true luxury experience. We're gonna talk about why we like this lens, the image quality, the build quality, and also how it works on the Hasselblad X2D 100C. I wanna thank our sponsor, Adorama, for making this video possible, but for also making it fun and easy and stress-free to buy new camera gear. If you're a photographer, they have everything you could possibly want from lenses to cameras to tripods to bags to lighting, and they have great deals and they also include freebies a lot of the time. So if you're buying a kit, you might also get a free bag or something fun like that. I'll say a camera like this, it's an investment. And people who make big investments like this do so wisely, and Adoram is the right place to do that. I would first go there and sign up for the VIP Pro membership. That gets you twice as many VIP points for everything you buy. Then you could buy the body. And that right away gets you 16,000 VIP points. And that's good for getting $100 off this lens. Check out Adorama.com and be sure to use our links down below so they know we're doing a good job. Before we talk about the lens, a quick review of the Hasselblad X2D and the Hasselblad system. Watch our full review of the camera here and be sure to watch the history of Hasselblad podcast too, because the history of this really is important to it. Hasselblad creates Scandinavian design that is distinctly minimalist. And you see that when you look at the back of the camera, there's not a ton of buttons with extra labels everywhere. You see that with the battery, there's no battery door. The battery itself forms the bottom of the camera. The viewfinder up top here is stunningly beautiful and crystal clear. When I use the electronic viewfinder, it's like watching an IMAX movie. It must be twice as big as a traditional camera viewfinder. The camera itself has a real presence. Like when people see this around my neck, they don't think I'm a tourist. They think I'm a photographer. It has one CF Express card slot, but you don't actually even need that because it comes with one terabyte of internal memory. So you don't need to buy anything else because that is the Scandinavian design philosophy. This is a versatile lens and camera combo. It's great for events if you're at a party in close quarters or that's dimly lit. It's also great for dinner if you're taking pictures of your family across the table or a party or just walking around in a town like this where you're finding inspiration and architectural details or things like that. It's extremely versatile. Now I wanna talk about the construction and the quality of this lens, but I wanna go somewhere quiet so that you can hear how high quality it is. Welcome to my ASMR debut. I wanted to get, find a quiet place so you could hear how well this lens is made. And the first thing I wanna show you is the very cool lens cap. Look at this thing. It's magnetic and you pinch the middle and then it clicks right on. It's so satisfying and beautiful. Now I wish that you could feel this lens because it just feels good in the hand. I know it looks kind of bulky but it's incredibly lightweight and can you hear that? It's not plastic. It's some kind of super light metal. I'll have to find out what that is. Here you have a focusing ring and they're just really cool little details. It's covered in a bunch of little Hasselblad H's and it just feels good in the hand. It's a smooth plastic and it's really beautiful. There's no doubt that the construction of the lens is beautiful, but what about the optics? Is this sharp? How does it handle chromatic aberration? Is there vignetting? Well, let's find out. Let's talk about the optics. This is a compact travel lens, so it's not meant to be the ultimate perfect optical quality. There are some compromises made for convenience. But still, the sharpness with this 100 megapixel body is insane. And that gives you so much croppability when you need it. We've been really happy with that. Here's an example of that croppability, just a snapshot. 
but look at the reflection in my glasses. You can zoom in and clearly see the interior of the car and even where we are on the map. Even for the types of snapshots you might take for travel or street photography, you capture all the detail, all the texture. This incredibly sharp lens and 100 megapixel sensor capture everything. Chelsea liked the architecture of this home, but can you see the cat? Wait till I zoom in. It's incredible. You can even read the writing. When shooting into the sun, we're seeing a lot of flaring and some of it gets to be very colorful, especially when you get into high f-stops, the starbursts here. Now, this isn't crisp and clean like I've come to expect from, say, Sony GM lenses, but it's not sterile either. Like it has a lot of emotion and feeling. And honestly, I don't mind that when I'm shooting into the sun and using it as a focal point. I like that creativity. Just know what you're getting. Note that you only get this kind of flaring when using high f-stops like f32 and shooting directly into the sun. At low f-stops, the contrast was basically perfect. Also note these magenta and green splotches are caused by reflections from the surface of the sensor. I think these are the autofocus points. It happens on all Sony sensors, including those in Sony and Nikon cameras. These Hasselblad lenses have a feature we haven't talked about yet, and that's a built-in leaf shutter. This leaf shutter gives it some pretty amazing capabilities, like the ability to sync with flash in bright sunlight up to one four thousandths of a second, whereas like one two hundredth is a more normal speed. But I didn't bring a big light stand and a strobe here, so let's go home and try out some portraits in sunlight there. To explain the benefit of the Hasselblad leaf shutter in the lenses, I'm gonna start by taking a picture with my Nikon Z9 here, which does not have a leaf shutter. And I'm just kind of bright sun, but realistically, that's how photography works. Whether it's your family or professional photography, you often don't get to pick the time. So I've done what I can, which is to put Chelsea in the shadow here and I'll take a picture. Chelsea's in shadow, but that means her face is actually lit by reflected light from all the grass out here. So she's getting a green cast. And also there's no catch light in her eyes. It's just not attractive. So you can remedy that with a strobe like my flashpoint strobe here from Adorama. Now the max sync speed of my Z9 is 1 60th of a second. That means that's the fastest shutter I can use. But I also want to blur the background. So I'm going to use F2.8. And of course I'm at the base ISO. So I'll take a picture with the flash. Now she has a catch light, but you can see the background is actually way overexposed. That nice blue sky isn't visible at all. And you can't see the white puffy clouds because everything's blown out. It's overexposed because I couldn't go any faster than 1 60th of a second and maintain my flash sync. Now, this strobe does support high speed sync, but if I turn on high speed sync, that makes the flash pulse. It looks okay in the picture, but it reduces the flash output by several stops. And I need all the power I can get out here in broad daylight fighting the sun. So I'll put down the Z9 here and I'll put this trigger on my Hasselblad. Now with the Hasselblad, I am not limited to 1 1 60th of a second. So I'm going to work my way up through the shutter speeds. And you'll see as I adjust the shutter speed, I control the background light, how bright the background is. And that's, that's really powerful. Shooting at 1 1 60th, just like I did with the Nikon, the sky is still blown out. But when I raise the shutter speed to 1 640th, now the leaf shutter is blocking out the ambient light. So you can actually see blue sky. At 1 1250th, I found my flash started to get really dim, and that's because my flash duration was too long. It couldn't keep up with the fast Hasselblad lens, and at 1 4000th, the flash was kind of useless. So you might not be able to use strobes all the way to 1 4000th, but it depends on your flash's duration. That's pretty remarkable. That's like three stops faster than I could get with the Nikon, and that gave me so much more control over the light, and that gave me much better results. The leaf shutter's fast sync speed gave me blue skies but also deeper shadows and more contrast, making a 3D look. By cutting the ambient light, it also allowed me to kill the green color cast in Chelsea's skin, making her look much better. Overall, the Hasselblad picture is just far more professional than the Nikon could produce. Shooting these portraits with the Hasselblad made me appreciate some of the great things about the system, like the aspect ratio is closer to 8x10, which is what you need for most portraits and for things like Instagram. The dynamic range of the medium format sensor is crazy, so even though the shot's a little bit bright, I can recover those highlights and bring back so much detail. 22 millimeters isn't a traditional focal length for portraits, but look, I can crop so deep and everything is tack sharp. I could definitely make deep cuts 
and huge enlargements and still have fantastic results. Things got a little weird as we look at the bokeh though. You can see soap bubble bokeh here, which some people seek out and pay more for, but is not traditionally considered the perfect type of bokeh. Usually you'd want to see smooth edges. I think it looks cool. Some people find it distracting. As we get towards the edges of the frame, we can see there's a little bit of smearing. This doesn't represent optical perfection, which isn't what this lens is about, but it actually does help focus your attention on the center of the frame where things really are optically sharp. So what do you think of the new Hasselblad 28? I think it's a great lens. It's versatile, like we talked about. And on this body, it gives you a lot of different capabilities. Yeah, I think it's great for travel. Like I'm actually amazed at how small and light it is, especially picking up my Z9, which I realized the whole rig is heavier than this medium format setup. It's not the camera for everything. I think it's an amazing experience. It's fun. And I love the pictures that come out of it. Whether you want this lens, this Hasselblad body, or any other camera, lens, or photography accessory, you can find it at Adorama. They sponsored this video, but they also sell a bunch of stuff for creators like you. So if you're looking for strobes, these flashpoint strobes we use all of the time are excellent and they help improve your photography a lot. So don't overlook what controlling your light can do. They also have great deals. So if you buy a kit, you might get a free gift from Adorama. And they have a points program, so if you're buying a lot of camera gear, then you're going to accrue those points and save in the long term. Tony's racking up a lot of points for the Northrop family. So check out Adorama. You can use the links down below, and that gives us credit so we can make more videos like this. If there's anything else you want to know, leave comments down below. Thanks, Adorama. Bye.